Okay, section two, we're on power functions. Power functions basically uh, is just something to a power. So let's, um, f of x equals to some kind of constant times x to a power. So this is the power function. This is like the basic power function. You only have one term. Okay, so in here, this is the constant constant of variation this part is the power and k and a are both non-zero Okay, so it's going to be a constant, whatever that number is, or coefficient, times x to a power. You have two kinds that you may see, direct variation or inverse variation. Direct variation means that you have positive exponents. So for example, oops, for example, you have something like y equals 2x. So 2x is the power function. That means k is 2. The power is 1. And that power being a positive exponent is going to be a direct variation. Direct variation means that as x increases, y is going to increase. So like as you do more of this, this also gets more. Does that kind of make sense? So if you put more money in your bank, then the interest will grow. OK? And how do you know what's going to happen? If that is if the exponent is positive. Or so for example, another example would be y equals square root x. What is the power on the square root x? Do you guys remember how to change square roots into a power? One half? Yes. So that is one half. The power is one half. One half is a positive number, so that means it's going to have a direct variation. So as something increases, the y will also increase. When x gets bigger, y gets bigger. Right? So when x gets bigger, one, two, three, four, five, y also gets bigger. So that's called direct variation. <clears throat> Indirect variation, or oh, sorry, inverse variation means that you're going to have negative exponent. Okay, so for example, you have y equals 1 over x. y equals 1 over x. In 1 over x, what is the exponent? Negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 means that that is a negative exponent, which means it's going to be inverse variation. That means as x gets bigger, y gets smaller. Okay, so you know, let's take a look. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 1 half. When x is 3, y is 1 third. And x is 4, y is 1 fourth. So that means as x is getting bigger and bigger, y is getting smaller and smaller. So that's called inverse variation. Um, or we have something like y, y equals 1 over square root x. Y over, uh, sorry, 1 over square root x, what is the exponent? Negative one half. So again, that's a negative number, which means you're going to have inverse variation. Okay, really quickly, let's have you guys figure this out. Um, one, two, three, four. Which one is direct variation? Which one is inverse variation? What is the constant of variation? And what is the power? Please note, in each question, only pi and k are constant. Because there's really not a variable you can look at. So only k and pi are constant. If it's not k or pi, it's a variable. That means that's like your x. <clears throat> Let's start with Alana. Number one, 
Is this direct variation or inverse variation? Good. Um, junior, what is the constant of variation? Huh? No. Along with pi, there's another number. Huh? 2 pi. OK. Uh, Allison, what is the power? 1, yes. Aaron, what is uh, number two? Is this direct or inverse variation? Uh huh. Eunice, what is the constant of variation? Yes. And then Mark, what is the power? Mm hmm. <clears throat> Blake, number three. What uh, is this direct or inverse? Inverse. Uh yes. Uh Sally, what is the constant of variation? Mm-hmm. Evan, what is the power? Huh? Two. Two. No, so close. What? No. One that's No, not one over two. Negative two. Negative two. You have to change that into a um numerator. Uh Davis, uh number four. Direct or inverse? Inverse. Uh-huh. Uh Iris, uh constant of variation. Mm -hmm. And last one, Amelia, power is? Yes. Okay, so now let's talk about a special power function. Special, one special power function is called the monomial function. Monomial function is basically exactly like the power function where you have k times x to a power, let's just call it a. Uh, but the difference is in a power, um, in a power function, a can be any number you want, but in a monomial function, this has to be uh, positive. Because we're basically taking one part out from the polynomial function, so one term out, so that has to be a positive. We, we're not going to go into negative numbers, so uh, there's only one term because it's a monomial from a polynomial. All right. Next, you're going to do this activity which you did when, last year uh, in decimals. You're going to graph all six graphs x from x to the first to x to the sixth. And then you're going to look at it from the window of negative one to one. Copy and paste the graph here. So I'm going to unlock you from your iPad soon. And then you're going to determine which ones are even and which ones are odd. Which ones are even, which ones are odd? Remember from last chapter, what does, how does even functions look like? How does odd functions look like? Okay. All right, so these are the six graphs. What do you guys notice? Which ones are even? Hmm? Even what? Even exponents, x squared, x to the fourth, and x to the sixth. And which ones are odd? The odd ones, x, x cubed, and x to the fifth. So the, basically, the exponent determines uh, what kind of um, function it's actually going to look like. So that's the key point that you need to remember. Uh, now we're going to look at n behavior again. So basically, all the ones that are even and all the ones that are odd are going to look the same at the n, the n behavior. So let's look at x cubed, for example. We're going to rewrite or rethink about n behavior. But before we do that, let's see how much you remember of all of this analysis. So do everything up to n behavior. So n behavior, we're going to do something different. So don't do that yet. But you're going to analyze this function just like you did for chapter one. Um, go ahead and do that. Let's start with Josh. What is the domain? Uh huh. All real numbers. Okay, Trey. What is the range? All real numbers. Mm hmm. Jennifer, what's the continuity? Continuous. Uh, Penny, increasing, decreasing. Mm -hmm. Uh, from where to where? Um, 
Uh huh. Okay, so no increase, uh, no decreasing. Um, McKenna, um, even, odd or even? Uh huh. Uh, Sherry, boundedness. Uh huh, not bounded. Uh, Andy, extrema. Mm, there's no extrema because you're always increasing, so there's no turn. So, none. And then Caleb, asymptote. None. Okay, so let's talk about end behavior. When we're talking about end behavior, we're talking about what's going on at the two ends. When x is going all the way to the right, where is y going? When x is going all the way to the left, where is y going? So, when we say x is going all the way to the right, we're saying all the way to infinity. When x is going all the way to infinity, where is y going on this graph? Up, right? Up we call infinity. So when x is going to infinity this way, y is going to infinity as well. Okay? When x is going to the left, left is called negative infinity, yes. When we're going to the left, we're going to say that's x going to negative infinity. x is going to negative infinity. Where is y going in this case? Negative infinity. It's going down, which is negative infinity. So y is going down y is going to negative infinity as well. So now what we want to do is rewrite this whole information in a concise way. And please, when I say this, I really mean it. Write it exactly the way I show you. Please don't create your own notations. Uh, it doesn't work. Um, you have to write it exactly the way I show you. If you don't, I will put, take points off. OK, so end behavior. When x is going to the right, y is going up. That means. We would write it this way, limit, so L-I-M, okay, L-I-M. When X is going to infinity, that is right underneath the L-I-M. Please don't write it to the right, don't write it to the left, don't write it anywhere you want, only on the bottom of L-I-M, okay? When X is going to the right, when X is going to infinity, Y is going up, but we don't say Y anymore, we say F of X. So now f of x goes on the right of the limit sign. We say f of x goes up, so equals to infinity. You have to write it exactly the way I show you. Please don't create your own thing. OK, now that is going to the right. Now we're going to go to the left. So limit as x goes to the left. The left is negative infinity y, which is now f of x, is going to negative infinity, which is going down. So from now on, this is how you're going to write end behavior. OK, from now on, this is how you're going to write end behavior, which, uh, you know, last chapter we just wrote 3 fourths or 1 or something like that. This time, you're going to write limit as blah, 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 blah equals 3 fourths. So same number, uh, but you're just going to write this whole limit thing. OK, let's practice. Um, this one, you need to take out your graphing calculator and graph. So 2 thirds x to the fourth. <coughs> All right, let's do the transformation last. Um, let's start with Ashley. What is the domain? Mm -hmm, all real numbers. Okay, back to Alana. What is the range? Uh huh. Greater than or equal to zero. So if you want to write interval notation, you write it like this. Junior, what's the continuity? Uh huh. Continuous. Um, Aaron, increasing, decreasing. Is what? Mm -hmm. Six, no, it's actually an integer. Increasing from where to where. Did anybody? 
Huh? Zero to infinity? Yes. Zero to infinity. And then decreasing is from... Yeah, negative infinity to zero. Okay, the graph should look like this. Something like that. Just in case you... Um, we're not sure if your graph is right. Um, Allison, is it odd or even? Even. <clears throat> Eunice, uh, found it above or below? Below. Uh, Mark, local absolute extrema. Huh? There is one. Flick? Yes. Sally, asymptotes? Yeah, no asymptote. Um, end behavior. All right, so limit as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to infinity, and limit as x goes to negative infinity, f of x still goes to infinity. All right. Um, we will only be able to go through this last part, the, the very last page we don't have time to go through today. Uh, that one we'll have to go uh, do it on, uh, sorry, tomorrow. Okay, so if we have a power function where, you know, you have this function like this, there are two possible scenarios. One is in the first quadrant, the other one is in the fourth quadrant. So if k is positive, obviously you're only going to point up and there are only a few cases. If a is equal to 1, that is k times x to the first power. So that's just like y equals x. So it's just a straight line. If that number is less than 0, if that number is less than 0, basically you have like, um, mm, what is this? Like basically 1 over x. Uh, so basically that's a negative one. So a is less than zero. It's going to be a one over x graph. Remember this one over x graph on the first quadrant looks like that. When that number is between zero and one, between zero and one, a typical one would be like one half. One half, think about your square root graph. Square root graph looks like this. So those are the only three possible ways of having a power function. When k is negative, that means everything is going to flip down. <coughs> so everything is going to flip down. It's going to look exactly the same, but just going in the reflected x direction way. So based on k, based on the exponent, you can predict the graph. <coughs> 